This show is controversial and contains content you may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Good morning, Dublin. Welcome. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. I'm Adrian Kennedy. We're here until uh, midday today. Our telephone number is 6797981. You can text or WhatsApp us on 87 Seven ninety-eight, ninety-eight, ninety-eight. Coming up a little bit later on, uh, we have a video for you on our uh, Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and uh, Jeremy D. And on our Facebook page, you will see a video. I want you to have a look at the video, and then we want to get your comments a little bit later on. It's, um, I have to say, it's a little bit shocking. It really is. It's extremely shocking, actually, when you uh, see this video. But have a look at it right now. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. I'm Adrian Kennedy, and that man there is Jeremy Dixon. Hey, how are you? You okay? Yeah, grand job. <laughs> You're such a diva. No, I'm... Look, Adrian is complaining. Look. Literally. I... Two hours. Are you having hot flushes? Look. Look. You are. Adrian is sweating profusely uh, at the moment in the studio. I know some of you are eating at the moment. Will people be eating at this time? It's a bit odd. At this hour of the day to be eating. You can eat at any time. I had a bowl of Cocoa Pops at one o'clock yesterday morning, so anything's possible. Anyway, Adrian is uh, sweating profusely on the radio at the moment because the air conditioning is is off at the moment and it's actually... um... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm going to. Do you want me to get you you a fan or something? Yeah, Yeah, that'd be good, but... Here is something that Adrian witnessed in... What shop was it yesterday? It wasn't in the shop, it was in a post office. Oh, sorry, in a post office yesterday. And I want him to share this story with you because this is something that I am guilty of doing. It's something that a lot of you are guilty of doing. And we want to try and find out from you, the listener, whether or not it's uh, it's bad manners or not. So I want you well, to... Well, it hear- is bad manners, okay? But no, Here, here's the story. That's a matter of opinion. Uh, actually, it's doubly bad manners. It's, it's bad manners in two different ways, okay? Uh, there I am. I'm in the post office. There's a woman ahead of me in the queue. By the way... Yep. Post offices are for old people. Do you still have to buy stamps if you're sending a, a letter or something? I haven't been in a post office in about 20 years. I was, because I was buying a birthday card to send to somebody who lives abroad. Yeah. Do you not have a little book of stamps at home? No. Anyhow, uh, there it was, and this woman, this young woman was in the queue ahead of me, yeah? And yeah. she was on the phone, and that's fine. Uh, but then she went up to the counter while she was still on the phone. And she continued to talk. And she, here's, here's the way the conversation was. So there she was, with her phone in her hand. Yeah, ma, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Sorry, yeah, stamp for um, America, please, she says to your woman, okay? And then she goes back. No, man, yeah, I, I understand what you mean, yeah. Um, I want a stamp for um, America, please. And your woman was trying to converse with her and say, is it for a package or is it for a letter? Okay? But all the while, your woman's talking on the phone to her mother or whoever she was talking to. So she was being doubly rude. She was being rude to the person she was on the phone to, and she was being extra rude to the woman behind the counter. The woman behind the counter was trying to ask her questions about the transaction that they were doing. Yeah. And this one couldn't have given her the time of day. Now, I'm guilty of doing it myself. It's a, and, it, and in fact... It's such a rude, rude habit. No, I don't think so. It absolutely is. In a convenience store a couple of weeks ago, the woman behind the counter refused to serve me because I was on the now, phone. fair play to her. No, not no, at all. No, she's absolutely no, dead no. right. I'm sorry, if you're a shop assistant, your job is... It's none of your business whether or not the customer is on the phone or not. Your job is to serve me um, whether you like it or not. And this woman... In this convenience store, Sorry, d- 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 such a thing as actually uh, manners, manners, the, the, the bad manners that that woman showed, not only to the girl behind the counter, but to whoever she was talking to on the phone as well, because she kept interrupting the conversation on the phone to deal with what she was doing in the in the post office. Okay, uh, from you, uh, quick thoughts, please. Yeah, quick thoughts. Uh, text us now on oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Is it rude? to go up to a counter uh, or a till, a shop counter or a till, uh, while you're talking on the mobile phone. And have shop assistants got a right to refuse to serve you? I'm sorry, it's none of their business whether you're on the phone or not. It's all to do with manners, okay? And you clearly have none if you went up to a counter and continued your conversation while you were ordering whatever you were ordering behind the counter. It's disgusting, it's so rude. It's the height of ignorance. It is, I'm sorry. It's the height of ignorance. It, 
it's a bit rude I will, I will grant you okay we'll say for instance when I was in the shop there a couple of weeks ago yeah mm-hmm. um, and I was on a very important call at the time that I couldn't hang up on okay couldn't hang up on the call and I had to go into the shop and get something yeah so I didn't have a choice I couldn't hang up on the person so what was I supposed to do at least put them on hold for a minute. Can you hang on for one second, Mary? I'm just at a counter here in the shop, and uh, I'll be with you now in a second. No, this... And c- you hold the phone in your hand, and you deal with no, whatever no, it is you're dealing no, with. No, I couldn't put them on hold. Well, then why did you go into the shop, then? Because I... Why didn't you finish your phone call before you even went into the shop? It's so rude. Yeah, I don't it's think so. It's the height of f***ing ignorance. Oh, my God. It oh really my. is. You're so. like a demon. I am. Where's the fun and games here? What's, what's all the serious? You, you, it's just, it, it'd actually be typical of you. Why so serious, Adrian? Just Why so, so serious? obnoxious. Okay, I want to hear from you. Um, there's the very first message that we got in about this. It is very rude. And if you do not get that, then you were dragged up. No, I was If brought- you don't get how rude that is. It- and the shop assistant was dead right to say, I'm sorry, until you're prepared to actually converse with me face to face, uh, then I've nothing to say to you. Sorry, if you're a shop, you need to get down off your high horse if you're a shop assistant. Like, you're not a brain surgeon here. You're serving behind the till, so... You, <gasps> no, but come on. So that... Oh, right. So that means people can be rude to you, doesn't no, it? No, that's not being... That's a, what you're saying. You've got such a lowly job, people can be rude to you if they want. That's what you're saying? That's what it sounded like, <laughs> but it, it, it's not what I meant to say. No, what I'm saying is, don't be getting uppity. You're a shop assistant. You know what I mean? You're not... Fair enough. Okay, it? would you walk in, uh, so you have an appointment this afternoon. I had an appointment yesterday with the dentist. With the dentist, okay. Yeah. And you walked into the dentist, were you on the phone when the no, dentist because was he, talking to you? He can't put a drill in my mouth when I'm on the phone, that's okay, ridiculous. Okay, uh, you walk into your GP. Uh, doctor, I have a pain in my stomach, but hang on for one second. Yeah, Mary, yeah, Grant, yeah, okay. No. Sorry, doc. and the doctor's saying, what, where's your pain? Sorry, hang on for one second, Mary. You wouldn't do that. No, because the doctor... Because is, of the height of ignorance. No, because the doctor isn't a till worker. That's the difference. So again, what you're saying is calm you're down, calm down, you're calm down. a lowly worker. Pull it back there. Pull it back. You're a lowly Hang worker. Back her up. Back her up. A lowly worker who doesn't deserve respect, who doesn't deserve uh, manners. All I'm saying is, if you're a shop assistant, your job as a shop assistant, or what are they called that work on the till? A shop assistant. Shop assistant. Your job is to take my money, okay, and smile. As per conversation we had a couple of weeks ago, that's all you're paid to do to take my money and smile it's none of your business whether I'm talking on the phone or not it is because she's trying to talk to you or he's trying to talk to you trying to converse with you and you're there literally being obnoxious there's some a lot of texts coming in on this already uh, you can text us on 0877 98, 98, 98. how do you feel about that do you think um, I mean Adrian's saying it's the height I, I take grave offence to being told uh, that I was dragged up I mean, I regularly give up a seat to an old okay, person. Okay, yeah, but, on, but on I, the always, I would have always thought, um, you know, somebody like your mother would have instilled good manners in you. She clearly didn't. Yeah, when I was growing up, mobile phones weren't a thing, so um, yep. she didn't have a it, chance. It, it, to do it that. takes the length of time you're at the counter to say to the person you're on the phone to, "Excuse me for one second, Mary. I'll be with you in a second if you don't mind." I but was the, speaking the, to Alva from Twenty Four Hour. Ranking. So why didn't you wait till, the, till you finished the call before Be- you went into the shop? Because it took me about two hours to get through to no, Alva from care, 24 hours. Don't care what your excuse is. There is no excuse for being rude at a, at a counter. Claire, you're on 98FM. How are you, Claire? Hi, guys. How are you? Good, thank you, Claire. Well, he's after annoying me because I, I always knew he was rude, but now I've just seen absolute rudeness, just disgusting rudeness. Am I right or am I wrong? No, you're all right. I totally agree with you. Utterly boils my blood. Mm. It really does. I was in a, I won't mention where I was, but I was in a leading supermarket. <clears throat> I was waiting to get served and the cashier turned around, picked up her own mobile phone, texted away, whatever she was, whether it would be on Facebook, Twitter or a text message, whatever. And I'm standing there kind of like twiddling my fingers waiting to get served at the till and she's there texting away. So, but so, so why, he's, but so what? So, but, but, he, sorry, do you believe in having good manners? Yeah, of course I well, do. Well then, that's all this is, isn't it, Claire? Manners cost nothing. Manners they cost nothing. cost nothing. I say to my kids, I have a five-year-old, a three-and-a-half, and a two-and-a-half-year-old, and when we're in the shop and I buy them maybe a Kinder Egg or whatever, I say, what do you say, guys, ma- yous are? And they say, manners. And they turn around and then they say, thank you, thank you. I know, but Claire, Claire, manners, the word manners is subjective. In other words, what some people think are bad manners, other people, uh, like I think, I think for, for argument's sake, I think it's bad manners to smoke while you're walking down the street and blow it in someone's face. But other people may not think that's bad manners. So do you get the point I'm trying to make, Claire, is that bad manners is, is a no, subjective... No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that bad manners. I'd call that disgusting. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, but I know... 
uh, you're subjecting uh, people to I had an incident phone. recently where the person behind the counter was on the phone while well, serving me say, right that's what I was yeah. saying I oh no that's that's, that's that's bad out I'm and sorry I, and I said to the guy uh, yeah. I, I'll pay for this as soon as you're actually going yeah. to give me some attention here. No, that's scum. Uh, that's scum. It's, that, it, it's, it works both ways. No, that person should be sacked. It works both I, I agree. Well, I did. I went up to the manager and I said it to him. Because yeah. I said, I used to work in a leading supermarket like that. And you're not allowed to have your phones on you. Mm. You're not allowed to gum. You're not even uh, allowed to eat at the till. Maybe a, a drop of water, but turn away from the customer, take a sip of water and say, sorry, excuse me. It's all about just using your manners and being polite. And it's c- uh, like, like you said... Manners cost nothing. Absolutely. If I never teach my kids anything, I'll teach them damn good manners and they'll hold the door open for a lady or a gentleman. But like I said, I I see I've a problem with that, Claire. The problem, why? Uh, holding a door open for a lady. Why should I get a, Why should a lady get a door held open for her just because she's a lady? I said a lady or a man. Are you listening to me? Did you say man? She did. She did. She did. A holding a, a door open for payback. somebody. Holding a door open for somebody. Okay. Yes, you should hold, uh, hold a door open for for regardless. For regardless. anybody. For anybody coming in behind you, you don't just let the door go. You look behind you to make sure there's nobody coming in. Then you let the door go. If there's somebody coming in behind you, you hold the door open. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. Okay. I want to paint, paint the scenario, Jeremy. There you are in the dentist. Yeah. You're on the chair and he's checking out your gob and his phone rings and he starts talking on the phone no. that would do your head in hey, here's the difference guys okay I'm don't call me guys I hate people who use that word go on anyway <laughs> guys guys <laughs> such an annoying word anyway go on okay here's the thing folks no here's the thing people you are paying the dentist to do a job so that's why he shouldn't be answering the phone sorry the shop assistant isn't paying me uh, to come into their shop. I'm doing them a favour by buying okay. something in their but shop. But let me read out Enda's message that just came in, okay? And you can't talk because it didn't work, okay? Okay. Uh, I totally agree with Adrian. It's totally. disgustingly rude. Do people think that they are that important that they can't afford uh, to give somebody 30 seconds of their attention? Ignorant people who think they're above everyone else. There you go. This comes from Enda who's yep. texting while he's in work. Is that not rude, Enda? But he's doing exactly what he was complaining about. He's not. He's hardly... Yes, he's texting. It's not like he's driving. No. Is it? And he's, he, how do you know? He could be sitting at an office desk. No, but he's giving out about people no, being on their phone. No, he's sitting at an office desk. No, but he's about people being on their phone when they're supposed to be working. He's doing exactly that. You, how do you know he's not on his morning break? Yeah, exactly. You don't, okay? So, the point I'm trying to make is, if you think you're above somebody that you cannot give them 30 seconds of your attention because the phone call is just so important, then shame on you. Absolutely shame on you. So, has my mother done a bad job in bringing me up? On that one, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I'd say, and, yeah, I, I, and I'd say, agree. I'd say, knowing your mother, if she saw you doing that, she'd be disgusted with you. So I don't get a clipper in the ear. She lads, lads, I'm not afraid you. of my mother anymore. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Okay, I'm a little afraid of her, <laughs> but um, she's not going to tell me how to behave. Mm, I think she probably will. Uh, FJ has been on to us, and he says, "Jeremy Dixon, you are one rude, consenting uh, bastard." What am I consenting to? <laughs> Condescending is what he's that trying says. To say. Consenting. Condescending. Thanks, Claire. 67979081 is our telephone number. You can text or WhatsApp us on 0877989898. 0877989898. So for people who've just joined us, explain what your, what your rant is about. There I was at a counter in a post office. In front of me was a woman who was on the phone. And that was all well and good. She was on the phone. Uh, and then she got beckoned over to counter number seven, please. It was one of the big... What sort of post office was that? The big one in Swords, in Airside and Swords. I didn't know there was one. Oh, not in Airside, in um, the pavilions. It's irrelevant. It's a, the biggest post office I've ever been. Counter number seven, please. So, over she goes to counter number seven, please. Yeah. And uh, continued her conversation while the woman behind the counter is trying to uh, get her order out of her. And are you saying that, uh, are the post office trying to stamp this out? All shops should stamp it out. No, but post office in particular should stamp it out. Every shop should stamp it out. No, but a a post office. Should the post office... It should be stamped out. It should be stamped out. Rudeness should be stamped out. And I want to know, am I alone here? Are you one of those obnoxious kids that goes to counters and uh, speaks on the phone while you're actually trying to uh, complete a transaction at the counter? Now, while you're gathering your thoughts on this, I want you to think about something else that's in the news today because this is something that every single one of us has done. But after today's show, you will never do this again. What am I talking about? Mm, Take it away, Adrian. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. And skip to the end. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. That's blowing out the candles. 
Well, have I got news for you? Because in today's news, a shocking, this is absolutely shocking, this is. Listeners will be shocked to hear that blowing out your birthday candles increases bacteria on the cake by 1,400%. I didn't even know there was such a thing. As, how can you have a 1,000%? How can you have that? <laughs> you can't. How does that exist? It doesn't exist. It's like, you know these lick arses in work who say, yes boss, I'll give you 150% this week. How can you give someone 150%? Anyway, go on. Um, scientists have discovered that if you blow out uh, birthday candles on a cake, it increases the bacteria levels on the cake by up to 1,400%. It's something we all do. Uh, but scientists in the university in South Carolina conducted research on two different cakes. So they took one cake uh, that the candles hadn't been blown out on, so the candles are still there, and they compared it with a cake where the candles had been blown out, and it confirmed uh, that the bacteria on the cake with the candles that had been blown out was disgusting. We're talking like toilet bowl stuff here. Ew! Um, al although the results are shocking, it says, the researchers insist um, that the human mouth is full of bacteria and while some of it is not harmful, um, you are obviously eating birthday cake that could make you seriously sick. So basically, if you are at a birthday and uh, they blow out the candles yep. and then they chop up the cake and bring it to you... Uh, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't touch it. it. Because you're basically eating something that somebody has spat on. I don't know, when, when you're blown, do you, is there spitting going on? What do you mean? Is there spitting? No, I, you... I can tend to blow without uh, spitting. You seem, you, no. Hang on, let me try it. <sighs> well, no, there's no spit coming out. But there probably is and you're not aware of it. Oh, really? Yeah, like if I was to put a microscope um, in front of you now, there's all little horrible Adrian Kennedy germs running around there. Termites and stuff like that fluke and ringworm and all that sort of stuff <laughs> whatever else is in your mouth um, so yes do not eat birthday cake uh, if, it is, if the candles have been blown out in other words Adrian if, if you went into McDonald's mm. tomorrow okay, and you ordered a fillet of fish yeah without the tartar sauce by the way never oh ordered. no wait, it has to have tartar sauce for scum no no, no 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 really no. it's creepy John that one by but the way anyway. if, you're, if you're listening Ronald the tartar nobody wants tartar sauce on Most the fillet fish. Most people actually do. They don't. It's vile. It's, it's disgusting. Anyway, you're in McDonald's tomorrow and you order a fillet of fish, yeah? And the man behind the counter gives it to you and says, there you go, Mr. Kennedy, because he knows your name. You're such a regular. He says, there's your fillet of fish, Mr. Kennedy. Now, before I give it to you, hang on a sec. <laughs> Enjoy your fillet of fish. <laughs> Would you eat that fillet of fish? No, probably not. No. So why do you eat birthday cake that's been blown on? Never uh, eat anything after it's been blown. Ever. Okay, thank you for the warning. 1,400% more bacteria. I want, like, to go back to, uh, yes. I want to go back to the rudeness, yeah? Yeah. Um, and this is from uh, Tony, who's a Dublin bus driver. Sorry, just before you go back to rudeness, uh, we just got a text message there. You should go back to school if you don't understand percentages. I don't. I want someone to explain to me on the show how you can have 1,400% of something. How is that possible? 100% is the maximum. Yeah. In other words... I filled up my petrol tank earlier on today. It's 100% full. I can't put any more into it. I don't know. I don't Does know. Does anybody know the answer? How can you have more than 100%? I just had a passenger on my Dublin bus on his phone. The money was just thrown in, no fair request, so I just blank people like this. It is the height of ignorance, says Tony. Oh, so Tony, bus drivers can be the rudest people as well. Some. Yeah, some of them. Not can. all so of them. I'm just saying. Jesse, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Jesse. I'm very well, thank you, Adrian. Jesse, you you're disgusted gone? with Jeremy. I am. Okay, Jesse, Jesse, paint a picture. Well, Jesse, no, no paint, a, paint a picture here, Jesse. Why, I, I, why is it so I rude? I need you to paint me a picture. Okay. I heard you well enough. And how dare you look down on somebody behind the till. And you you're, did. You, you know, you're people who are always going on about, oh, there's jobs out there for everybody. Yep. Every job is yeah, honourable. Yep. Right. Yeah, Except so, if you happen so to be uh, behind a counter. So, exactly. So, and you know, I mean, they are still a human being. Yes. They deserve a human courtesy, and you just have this huge, big superiority complex. You Not think to you're touch. Better than everybody. Jesse, I've I've worked cleaning toilets in my life. I've no. But you said earlier on you're only Did working you behind the counter. That's what you said. It's a non-skilled job. You're only I working behind the counter. Only working oh. behind the counter. Well, the, you're you. 
you are only Adrian's lackey. Oh, if you want to put it like uh, that. That hurt. There but let's, let, let's be honest, Jesse. Nobody. Face the fact. Okay, if we're going to call the spade a spade here, Jesse, nobody when they're grown up says, I aspire to be a shop assistant. <sighs> but they don't. And why not? Nobody does, though. Better than cleaning toilets, isn't it? No, I was very proud of the fact that I clean toilets. Um, but what I'm saying is, it's not a job you aspire to. to, to oh, I, I better shut up. You well, better. I, you better. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, Jeremy, my dear. I think you should stop digging while you can still see the air. No, Jesse. All I'm saying is, nobody, nobody says, you know, when they're five years of age, when I grow up, I want to be serving uh, people behind the shop counter. Maybe people Why not? Kids have little tills when they're mm. when they're young. I know my young fella has a till. Yeah, well then, he probably loves pressing the buttons. He on does. The he loves pressing there the buttons. Go. There you go. And you know what else he says? What he says? Have you got a Tesco club card? He actually <laughs> says that when he does it. But well, what? There I you mean, go. What? So he's dreaming of doing that job over my dead body. But in t- in, t- in twenty years time, Jesse, if he turned around and he says, "Daddy, I want to be a shop a shop till worker," I have to Did say, he really say over my dead body? That yeah, he, he was, actually said that. He yes. said that, didn't you he? You are. I, actually, you I mean, are you're, you're annoying me so much today, I'm going to throw you out of here. He's pompous. That's He's not pompous. That's the most condescending, disgusting thing I've ever heard you say. And I've all said of the people, a lot, I've said a lot. For all of the people who are listening to us right now working in shops, you said, if my son wants to work in a shop over my dead body. Okay, I don't mean, I'm being flippant here, you, Jesse. But you're not. I, yeah, that's, but you're actually not. You're offending so many oh, people. I don't know how I do this. I, I speak and then you I... Do it, you, do, you open your mouth, Jeremy. Yeah, that is it. I know, and I, my mother's probably listening and she's going to text me in a minute and say you're embarrassing the family. And, and, and she's yes. right. All I'm saying, Jesse, is I want... Over my dead body. Okay, That's yeah, what you yeah, said. Let's forget about that. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, Jesse, is how do I say this without offending? You can't. <laughs> no, if I you, can't. Okay, here's how oh. you, you, you roll back from it. Your son, when he's 20, wants to work in a shop, yeah? I'd be a bit disappointed in him. Would you not say, son, you do what you want to do? Well, no, I'd be happier whatever than... You do, whatever you do, son, you do your best at it. No, no, I agree with you there. I agree with you there, but I think every parent aspires for their child to... Oh, to have a proper... No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I told you stop digging. Oh, yeah. We are going to take a Yeah, break. I need some words. <laughs> Can people text me? And so- I'm actually not being an a-hole here. I'm you just- absolutely are. I think I'm... We'll be back in a moment. Yeah, I think we will, yeah. I'll be sad. The Voice of the City. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Good morning, Dublin. It is um, Wednesday morning. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks. Yeah, I've had time to reflect <laughs> on my wording. Uh, I'll read out some of your text, by the way. I'm being trolled to up to 90 uh, by you, the listener. It's funny, though. Um, people hear things that I didn't actually say, like this text message says, uh, just to clarify, to quote you, that's a low-life job as a shop assistant. I never said that uh, to that no, person. No, you didn't like, actually you say to, that. No. See, that really annoys me. When the implication, some, though. When... Do you stop adding fuel to the fire, please? No, you may not have actually said it. But no, but you, why is that but, person quoting me? I but didn't you implied it. No, that's you not did. Yeah. I'd be very disappointed if my son wants to work in a shop. Yeah, I, t- I would. What I'm saying is, a shop, a shop assistant job is what I would call a stepping stone job, okay? Mm-hmm. It's a job that you do maybe until you're... It's not a career. Is that not fair to say? Am I... No? Am I might be... Oh yeah, is it a career? I know somebody who is now a regional manager for Dunn Stores. It's a great start, job. Who started as a, an assistant That's, at the well, then you've just proven what I said. Working behind a till is a stepping stone. Oh my God, they're going to spit my food the next time I'm in my local supermarket, aren't they? I'm actually not going shopping for the next month. My son can live off beans. For the, I have six cans of beans in the, shop, in, the, in the press at home. He can live off them. Anyway, that's the only point that I was making, okay? Can we draw a line under it now? Okay, thank you very much. But although, can I ask people to text in uh, if you're a parent, okay? I want to honest thoughts. Let's get rid of this PC bull crap, okay? Stop being politically correct, okay? I'm saying I believe what the majority of parents feel. Okay, so if you're a parent, I want you to answer this question honestly by text, okay? Give them the text number, Adrian. 87 Okay, honest, honest reaction to this. How would you feel if your child ended up being a shop assistant, working behind a tail in the convenience store. How would you feel, honestly? Would you want more for them, or would you be happy? Okay, now, now before let me, you even go on with that conversation... Let me preface I, this I, by I, saying, every job is honourable, okay? And I've said this many times... Would you be disappointed if your son was working in the shop? That's what you said. I'd also be disappointed if he was a pimp. 
when really? he grows you're up. comparing the two? No, I'm just saying there, there's... <laughs> no, no, stop twisting let my me, words. Okay, let me read this message and I want to address this. This is very important that I address this yes. message, okay? Lads, I tune into 98FM every day in my shop from 7am to 10pm, seven days a week, where my staff and customers enjoy listening into all of uh, the different presenters. Yes. Uh, but after that idiot Jeremy's comments, I will never listen again. Till workers are... Sorry, till workers are some of the hardest workers in the country. Yes. Think of weekends, bank holidays, Christmas and Easter. While, well, all, the, okay, while me... all the professionals are off, people are working to serve obnoxious people like you who have zero respect. Take a look at yourself, Jeremy. You wouldn't last an hour behind a till. Now, okay, first of all, pers- hang on. Yes. To that person who's listening to us, uh, if you were offended by what was said, I apologise on behalf of 98FM because that's not what we're trying to do here. Um, I think, Jeremy, your comments are bang out of order. I even think to to ask people to even text in about this is bang out of order because by your own admission, every job is honourable. So I actually think this is a silly conversation. Okay, let's not have a t- conversation because one person is offended. Okay, to that person, let me address your, your text message. Okay, first of all, that's my personal opinion about my son. I'm not talking about your son. Secondly, I said every job is honourable, including your job. I've done your job. But what I'm saying is it's a stepping stone job, and I'm sure you would agree with that. And you're saying about you, you work uh, anti-social errors and you work Christmas and all that. So do I. No, you don't. You even work Christmas Day for a bit. 15 or Not 20 Christmas years. Day, but no shops are open Christmas Day. Yes, they are. Uh, loads of convenience show- stores are open on Christmas Day. So, yeah, I get the point you're making. You work hard, but everybody works hard as well. I worked as a waiter. I had to work New Year's Eve for 10 years in a row when I was a waiter, okay? So if you think I'm this silver splo- spoon Aegis that has never known a hard day's graft in my life, you, know, you don't know me very well. And to say that you won't listen again because you, you don't agree with my opinion is ridiculous as well. Would you, would you divorce your husband if he had a differing opinion to you? No. You take somebody else's. Here's the way opinions work to that texture, okay? Not everybody in your life that you're going to come across has the same opinion as you. But you take their opinion on board. You may not agree with their opinion. Okay, yeah. But to have an opinion is fine. But to be rude and obnoxious and condescending with that opinion is a different ballgame. Who's rude and condescending? You. In what way? I wouldn't want my... I'd be disappointed. Now, I want you to imagine you are a shop worker listening to us now and you're saying to that person, "Ah, it's a bit of a disappointing job, isn't it? I said it's a stepping stone job. You said I'd be disappointed if my son wanted to work in a shop. If he That's was, what you said. If he was happy working in... I wouldn't care if he was sleeping the... I, I wouldn't care if he was sweeping the streets. As I've said, my the way I was brought up by my parents was that every job that's legal, okay? Any job that's legal is an honourable job. I cleaned cigarette butts out of toilets when I was younger, yeah? I cleared tables. I was spat on by, by customers in restaurants uh, when I was younger. I've done every job that you can that you can think of. But in my own personal opinion about my own, as a, as a parent... I would want maybe a bit more from. But as well as that, when he's 16 years of age, he will be working in one of those jobs because he won't be one of these kids that's sitting at home doing nothing, scratching himself like a lot of kids nowadays. Hello, or sorry, Peter, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Peter? Hi, lad. How are you Go on, Peter. What do you want to say very quickly? Yeah, I agree with Jeremy. Absolutely. absolutely. Look, mm-hmm. and as a parent, as he said, and you have to check the word probably, as a parent, as I a would parent, want yes. more for my kids to has that bit more of guile to want a better job. Now, I have absolutely nothing for people working in jobs. I think shop assistants do a fantastic job. Abs- yeah, nobody is saying that, because that, per- that, that person is a bit touchy, to be honest with you. That's a tiny, that text, tiny yeah. bit touchy, you know. And look, look as I, at the end of the day, they, they're, they're the face of the shop. They serve very, very well. Um, I do, but, you know, on the note that, you know, basically about you guys, you know, going into a shop on a telephone, I find that the height of ignorance. Like, you know, so, yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I think you're right, Jeremy. You know, have more, have more, uh, go out for your kids and want more, you know, for them growing up, you know what I mean? So. That's and, that, and that's all I'm saying. I think most parents want... Y- y- but hang on for one second. The way you're saying it, can I tell you one thing, yeah? Yeah. My daughter works in a shop. Oh. <gasps> Yeah. Oh, yeah, shock! I, I knew she did. I know. Yeah. I know exactly where she works. I yeah. go to the place. And I'm she works in. I'm extremely proud of my daughter. And so you should be because she's up and she's up off her arse and she's working. Yeah. However, she's using it as a stepping stone for her career. She, she is. loves the job. I know she does. She, she loves the job. Sorry, it's, step, it's a stepping stone. It's a stepping you know, stone, Adrian. You've said that yourself your about career, her. You know. You have said that, Adrian. So I come said on. what? That it's a stepping stone. No, I didn't. You did. You said that's not the career she wants. No, she loves. She the wants job. to be a photographer or something she, like she, that. No, she doesn't. No, no, no. She, she loves did. the job in the shop. When she changed her mind, she loves the job in the shop. She does, but she doesn't want to be doing it in thirty years' time. Says who? When did she say that? She never said that. She never said that. I think no. you said it, though. No, I didn't. No. So what are you saying, Peter, that, that people are afraid to, to, to speak the truth? Is that what you're yeah, saying? I think I think it is. You're right there. You know, this, this left-handed PC world that we're in, everybody wants to please everybody else by saying what other people want to hear. At the end of the day, 
I, I'd want my kids to, to, to grow up and have a good job. A job that, you know, has prospects and, and career, you know, advancements in it. I understand, you know, if you're working for the likes of the big super chains, Tesco and those stores and Aldi and Little and all that, yeah, you have opportunities. But if you're working in a local little, little, little store, you know, the chances are... That's that you did, that you won't, there's nowhere you know, else to go. There's nowhere yeah. else to go. And that's, and that's just a statement of fact, Adrian. If you're Absolutely. working as a shop assistant in, in a small little shop, yeah? Mm-hmm. Hello? Have yeah. A, yeah, go on. It's an honourable job. And I want to say this very clearly to people. Open your ears and let me say this. It's an honourable job. You should be proud of it. You're getting up every morning and you're going to work instead of sitting on your bum. Okay? It's an honourable job. You should be proud of yourself. But where are you going to progress in your career working in a shop? That's none of your business. That's none of your business. And to judge somebody for it... Nobody's judging. You are. No, nobody's judging. You said I'd be disappointed if my son worked in a... How many times do I have to repeat that? Over my dead body will my son work in a shop. Peter, how, what do you think of that? That's twist. That, that's twist and words. It, it is twist and words. It's it's nice. Nice. It is twist. It is twist and words because what you're doing is you're trying to st- say that Jeremy by saying that it, he'd be disappointed in the decision. Yeah, no, he's making out. He's making him out to be the villain here yeah, when there is no, no, no villain. No, no. Yeah, there is no Adrian, villain. when people it's, say it's, over it's, their it's dead opinion. body, yeah. it's an opinion. It's when not, people say it's, over it's, their dead body, they don't actually mean it. In other words. My wife wanted to bring me to a movie this weekend and I said, I'm not going to that movie over my dead body will I go to that film. I will go and to did the- you go? No, I'm going this weekend. One last call, very quickly. Helen, you're on 98 FM. Hiya, Helen. Hiya, how are you? Sorry, Helen, this wasn't actually meant to continue for this whole section of the show, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Uh, you used to love when people were on their phones. Yeah, I hate Why? when I work in the supermarket and they'd stand there chatting away to me constantly. I just want to get on with the job. Talk on your phone, pretend I'm not there, let me do my job and just go. So you didn't have to engage in conversation with yeah, them then? because it's the same conversation with everyone. <laughs> I know, you're hearing person. the same thing. Yeah, it's a lovely day out there today. <laughs> and don't you wish you were out there in that great weather? Oh God, isn't the weather terrible? It's a case of, would you sack off? So, just leave me alone. I feel the same way. I don't know how you guys feel about this, Helen. I'm sure you go to the hairdressers regularly. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate that. I, I hate going to holidays. my. I hate going to my stylist and having a conversation with my stylist. Um, say, what man has a stylist? <laughs> really? <laughs> what do you call? What man has a stylist? You what? don't have enough hair to style. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so irritating. I would actually prefer somebody to be on their phone looking at Facebook or talking. Rather than like engaging in inane in conversation. Yeah, because it's always inane conversation. No, are you're you right. A party? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Oh, God, oh, God. It's, seriously, it does your head. Well, here's, here's the trick now, hours. Helen. When, here's the trick, Helen, when you're going to get your, your hair done with your stylist. And here's what I do uh, all the time is when you go, you sit down and you tell them what you want done with your hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In with your me, case, it's just like really keep, save some of it for yeah, me. Just, <laughs> just, and what I will do then, Helen, as soon as she starts cutting my hair, uh, what I will do is just close. The bloke goes to a woman. What? Have you never heard of a barber's, no? No, 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 no. Anyway, Anyway. Helen, uh, the woman that cuts my hair, um, what I will do as soon as she starts cutting, I will close my eyes and keep them closed until it's all over. Because she's not going to make conversation with you when your eyes are closed. (laughs) I just hate, I hear what you're saying though, I hate the small talk. Do you, Helen? I I can't stand it. And it's so forced as well. Like people feel like... So just don't talk to anybody. (laughs) I just hate small talk. And cause it's no, I have to, I'm have not a huge fan of small talk, but if you, like, my barber, I've gotten to know him over the years, and it's not small talk anymore. We have yeah, a conversation. When you're in a supermarket and you're working a till, they don't know you. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And so, did you, yeah. did you work? The same conversation. Did you work behind a supermarket I, till, Helen? I did for about seven years. And are you insulted? Are you yeah. highly insulted by what you heard on the show today? No, not at no, all. No, of course I'm not. I do it myself. Because you're level headed. Um, because I don't want to, like when I go into a supermarket, I don't want to engage with them. No, no, I'm talking about your. I'm, ta- well. I'm talking about a supermarket job being a stepping stone job. No, I hated it. It was soul destroying. Oh. oh. No, no, I didn't say, no, you didn't say that. No, hold, can we just for people listening? I uh, guarantee uh, most people who work in a supermarket would tell you just how much they hate it. Really? It's not a, yeah, it's not a nice job. You're you're treated like crap by the management, and it genuinely is. 
You know what job I wanted done? I'm going to finish up on this. I wanted your man. Who, who was your man, Helen, that used to work in that pro? Remember that quiz show where people actually used to run around the supermarket with trolleys? Oh, Dale Winton. Dale, Dale yeah. Winton. I, I loved that show when I was. I, that kid. was the bell. I'm sorry. ITV or whoever it is, whoever did that show, need to bring that back. What was it called? Supermarket Sweep. Like sweep. The best <laughs> show ever on television. <laughs> this was a show where the, it was hosted by Dale Winton, it who's the, the orange the orange fella. It was um, cringeworthy. And uh, the, the object of the game was you had to do shopping within a certain amount of time wasn't it so you had to find a, a can of, of Heinz beans within 30 seconds best show ever on television this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks I'm Adrian Kennedy we're here until uh, midday today now next on the programme a video has been sent in to us uh, that has gone uh, viral I want you to have a look at this video it's on our Facebook page right now which is facebook.com Slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Now, we've been led to believe that the video was recorded um, recently on the Lewis and it shows a young man literally clinging onto the side of a moving Lewis for several minutes. Now, he's seen uh, clearly in the video hanging on to uh, the part of the Lewis where the carriages connect. And in uh, the shocking video, uh, the Lewis is seen crossing a high bridge and narrowly missing pylons on the side of uh, the track. Now, two years ago here at 98FM, we highlighted a similar incident after teenagers were photographed scutting on the uh, rear windscreen wiper of a Lewis in the Drimna area. Now, this is an ongoing problem, and it's believed that these teenagers do it for the sheer thrill of it. Now, since our video has gone viral, several people have contacted us saying that they'd have no sympathy for this youth if anything were to happen to him. Others are saying that oh, stuff like this is all part of growing up. We all did it. We all scutted on the back of uh, bin lorries or milk floats or whatever. Um, so get over yourselves. And my question to you is, what do you think should be done to youths caught doing this on public transport? Should the parents be fined? One teenager commented on our page, what's the big deal? I always jump on the back of bin trucks with my friends. Same thing, I suppose. I'd love to hear from you on this on 67979081. Have a look at the video which we're posting on our Facebook page again at facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Have a look at the video and then give us your comments on 67979081. Good morning, Dublin. It is Wednesday morning. I'm Adrian Kennedy and this is 98FM's Dublin Talks. I want you to have a look at our Facebook page right now at facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. And on our Facebook page, you will see a video. Uh, we believe filmed recently uh, by a passenger on a Lewis. And what it shows, it clearly shows a young fella uh, hanging um, onto the side of the Lewis, outside the Lewis. Uh, going at a, well, the Lewis goes, in, depending on where, where the location is, it goes at a reasonable speed, goes about 50, 60 kilometers in some places. Um, and it just looks extraordinarily dangerous. Um, we highlighted a similar incident a couple of years back um, where teenagers were scutting on the rear windscreen wiper of the Lewis. Now, since our video has gone viral, several people have contacted us saying that they would have no sympathy for this youth if anything were to happen to him. Others are saying that doing things like this is all part of growing up and that we all did it when we were kids. Scutting on the back of milk trucks or buses or milk floats or whatever. And my question to you is, what do you think should be done? Like one message from a teenager said, what's the big deal here? I always jump on the back of bin trucks with my friends. Call me right now on 67979891. You can text or WhatsApp us 0877989898. Um, Graham, you're on 98FM. How are you, Graham? How are you? Good, thank you, Graham. What did you want to say on this? Well, I've seen the video there, and then, you know, obviously I'm grown up now, but as a, as a child, like when the teenage years, we, we would have did that on the dark, you know. Um, on days out, we would have went swimming in Bray, I could have done day, you know. Sorry, Graham, it's really hard to hear you. I don't know what's wrong with your phone. It's extremely hard to hear you. Can you hear me now? Ah, uh, that's a bit better, yep. No, I was just saying, Adrian, there, that, you know, as, as a younger lad in the team, in the teens, we would have went swimming to Bray and, and to, you know, done lady and the likes of that. And uh, on the way to or on the way back from there, we would have jumped on the dart, you know. And, like, where would you have, where would you have jumped on the dart? Like, where would you have been hanging on to? We... Between the carriages there, so you know where the two carriages join. Yeah. 
So like every every second college or something like that, there's a you know there's a couple of that joints and training together. Yeah. We would have just stood there in between there and, you know, probably two or three was at a time and then jumped out from one stop to the other and then, you know, then, then swap. But like the other guy says there, we used to do that when we were younger on, on bean trucks and milk trucks and just anything really, you know, like good, uh, ice cream vans and anything like that, you know. Now, as you look back on it, you're a grown man now, as you look yeah. back on it, do you think, oh my jeez, I can't believe I did that? I couldn't even imagine doing it now, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have the minerals to do it now, I would say, you know, it's... Uh, and you look, it, like, it's a simple matter of physics, Adrian, that's what it is. If you're, if you're travelling at, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, you know, and something clips you from the side or, you know, it takes a, you know, there's a bump and, and you fall. Like, the, the train, the Lewis is not stopping or the train, whatever you're doing, it's not stopping. So you, you're just going to, you're going to hit the ground, you're going to hit the post and it's a dead stop, you know, and... You know, you don't get a second chance. So, going back and putting yourself into the head of you as a young fella, what age are you talking about? What age would you have been doing that? I would have been early teens, kind of, you know, kind of 14, 15. Kind of putting yourself age, you know? into the head of a uh, of, of, of 15-year-old Graham, yeah. can you understand how you even did it? What, the reason for it? Yes, just, uh, yeah, the reason for it, yeah. No, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing of, like, that we didn't want to pay for the fare because... Probably most times we didn't anyway. You know, it was just it was just an extra thing. I don't know. I suppose it was just it was just something we did. You know, but it was, it was as terrible. You know, it's foolish. You know, to think of like I, I was told you on the road there. Now we couldn't imagine holding the air the first time, hanging on the trains and scutting on stuff. You know, that way it's, it's just it's just uh, you know it's just something that you you look back on. You kind of think, you know, what the hell was I thinking? You know. All right, stay there for one second, Graham. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Text or WhatsApp the program zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. So Graham is admitting that he did it himself as a young fella. That he stood in between the couplers on the on the dart, and the dart travels a lot faster than the Lewis. It has to be said. Um, where am I going now, Aoife? You're on ninety eight FM. How are you, Aoife? Hi. Now, Aoife, you can't believe the stupidity of what we see in that video. No, I think. They're just idiotic. Like, like there's live wires as well at the top of them, Lewis. Is so, like... There is? It only takes a moment for them to be electrocuted or just go right under, like... I mean, there's people saying, oh, that trail seek and we all did it when we were younger. Yeah, like, we but, all uh, but, but let's deal with that. We all did do it when we were younger. Maybe not hanging on the side I of a Lewis. I hang off the uh, side of a Lewis or a dart or a bus, like, but... No, but, uh, but I can tell you how you hung on the back of a bread van. Mm. Um... The bread van flying around our housing estate. Um, I did that. Didn't we all do things? In other words, like, I have people sending in messages saying that's the lowest of the low, he's the scum of the earth, and blah, 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 blah. I think we all forget when we were all younger ourselves. Yeah, I just think people, they're doing it now just for, like, a few likes on Facebook, or, like, I'll... Well, no, he didn't video and, the, He didn't video that. That was somebody actually... Yeah, but uh, 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 like, his mates were probably doing it and putting up on Snapchat and saying, oh, he's a legend. So he won't be a legend if he goes under the tram, like... No, I know he won't. Um, you know? And, uh, like I said, when I even think of scutting on the back of a of a bin truck or whatever, uh, it was very dangerous, in hindsight yeah. and all that, or hanging on to the back of a, of a bin lorry on a skateboard. I can remember doing all those things, and when you think about them, they were all extremely dangerous. Because all yeah. it took was the the bin truck to slam on its brakes, and you were gone, smack yeah. into the back of it. Yeah, but as that other chap was saying, there the speed of them trams as well. Like he could have like hit off anything, and just that that him gone. Like, well, stay there for one second. Really, like, okay, stay there for a second, Simon. You're on Dublin's ninety eight FM. How are you, Simon? Not so bad, Adrian. I'm just laughing here, thinking of you acting like Marty McFly on a skateboard <laughs> going along in the back of the truck. Uh, well, come I, here, did, I did. You did. And come here, I'd say your dad did too. I bet you if you were to text your dad now, and I'd say I, he'd probably be in old age now because you're in middle age, yes? Would I be correct? Uh, correct, yes. Yes, so basically, he probably, him and his mates probably would have done the same stuff too. They're, it's just kids being kids. Okay, just being uh, adventurous. Uh, all right, now, what I'm, what I'm saying that uh, doing that on the back of a bin, uh, or sorry, a, a bin lorry or on the back of a bread van or whatever, in hindsight is quite dangerous. Doing what this young fella is doing on the side of the Lewis is Crap suicidal. Season. 
It's, it's what, just thrill seeking. He's not thinking of that aspect. If a children don't think, they don't know better. I, it's just I'm having a bit of fun. I don't get all these people texting in, calling them a scumbag and that when their pa- own parents and all would have done it years ago on trains or cars or whatever. People have done it for years. I just think it's it's all uh, it's all right. It's, it, boys will be boys. That's it at the end of the day. So you I told, don't even know what. So hang on. You told the, the, the guys on the phone when they, when they answered to you uh, that this guy is a legend. Yeah, I think it's quite funny. I would have done the same exact same thing myself when I was a kid. We all did it, so we were all hypocrites. I don't know why your one is videoing it. I wonder whoever videoed it, they're just looking for likes on Facebook. They're just, I mean, we know what goes on. We know what happens. It's all now just highlighted because of social media. Well, now, there you go, Graham. This young fella's a legend. I wouldn't say he's a legend now. I mean, it's probably, look, I mean, the, 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 the degree of two probably what he's saying about the thrill seeking, you know, because we probably would have taken a, a, a you know, a, a fraction of that into more you have you know, because you enjoy roller coasters and enjoy, you know, big wallets and all so that. Hey, uh, Graham, I'm going to have to cut across you again. You're going to have to invest in a new phone. The sound off your phone is just awful. Um, Eva, what do you say to that, that this young fella is a legend? No, I, yeah, man, it's just tick. Like, he won't be a legend when he goes under that or, like, like, seriously hurts himself. Yeah, you know, sure like, I'm sure he's like, fine. He had a tight grip on the tram and it's not going as fast. Like, the glue doesn't even go that fast. Uh, so yeah, well, it goes on the live wires at the top as well. What if he had got electrocuted? Yeah, but he's not going near the wires. The wires are in the middle of the thing. You wouldn't be... Yeah, but them. hanging from the top of it where the wires are, like... Yeah, the wires are in the middle. He's right, on the so side what, of it. What if he had fallen and hurt himself or worse? Would he still be a legend? Well, do you know what? Well, a story would be told, so technically, but at the end of the day, I don't think that yeah, would have happened. I think he'd be square. Yeah, technically, he lost his life. He's not really a legend. If well, do you know what? Kids are doing dangerous well, stuff yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, but, like, there's other ways of bleeding down things, like trail seeking and fucking hanging off, sorry, hanging off the side of a, a tram. Like. Sure. And then, let me ask you, Eva, did you ever do anything like that yourself? So, no, I didn't do anything yeah. like that when I was younger. I, I would have been too much. Okay, but do, do me a favour, si- Simon, stay there for one second. He describes a young fellow like that as a legend. I'd love to hear from you on 67979981. You can text or WhatsApp us 0877989898. And if you haven't seen the video yet, check out our uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. You can have a look at that video for yourself. Facebook.com slash Adrian K and Jeremy D. Live and exclusive to Dublin's 98FM, Monday through Friday between 10 and midday, this is Adrian Kennedy. You're with 98FM's Dublin Talks. And Trish is here with Wednesday's top headlines. Thanks, Adrian. A cluster of electric cabling boxes for the Lewis at College Green is being likened to a mini Stonehenge. The City Council is being slammed for not putting the five metal boxes near Trinity College underground. They're needed for Cross City Lewis Line, but don't appear in plans for a civic plaza submitted to planners in May. Four men have been arrested in Dublin in connection with membership of the IRA. Gardaí investigating the activities of dissident Republicans carried out searches early this morning. The men, two in their 40s and two in their 20s, are being held at separate Garda stations in the city. And the number of visitors to see the Book of Kells has increased by over 10% this year. Over 454,000 people saw the medieval manuscript at Trinity College in the first six months of 2017. American tourists viewed the famous book the most, followed by Irish and Chinese visitors. Now you're up to date on 98FM. 98 98FM. 98 this is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Wednesday morning, the second day of August 2017. Good morning, Dublin. I'm Adrian Kennedy and this is 98FM's Dublin Talks. We're in the middle of a conversation all to do with a video that was sent in to us uh, and it's kind of Depends on your, your point of view. Some people think, you know, oh, fair play to them. Uh, others think, my God, how dangerous is this? And this is a video of a young fella hanging on to the side of the outside of uh, the Lewis. Um, we're not sure exactly when it was filmed. All we know is that it was filmed. It's not blagged. It's all real. Uh, we have been in touch with uh, Transdev, the company that runs uh, the Lewis. We've failed to get in touch with the um, the right person so we don't have a statement from Transdev but I know in the past they will uh, they will say that this is extremely dangerous uh, that the uh, Lewis's can go at high speed and uh, urge you not to uh, do stuff like this and a message just came in uh, a moment ago and it says a teen in Madrid 
lost both of his legs about two months ago on the underground metro, scutting between carriages with his friends. Now, if that's not a, a warning to young fellas um, about doing stuff like this, I don't know what is. Lost both of his legs uh, doing this on uh, the Lewis. And in fact, or on the metro in Madrid. And Louise, you're on about uh, when your brother was younger. Yeah, when my brother was younger, um, we were all only small at the time, but he was about seven. And I'll always remember it. The coal lorry that used to deliver the coal to us, he was kind of, before the, the coal man took off, he started to hang off the back of the truck and his coat got the nail. There was a few nails on the truck that he never even noticed and his coat got caught in the nails. He couldn't release himself. So the, the truck backed out and it went right over him twice, like forward and backwards till everyone started screaming and telling him that the child he thought was a bag of coal he was going over. He thought a bag of coal fell off the truck. So he ended up for years, he was told he'd never have children and he, thought he did end up having five children but he couldn't believe that because he was told he'd never have them because his whole stomach was totally destroyed from the wheels of the truck. And that's how dangerous that it can be. People don't seem to realise the total dangers in this life by doing all these thrill-seeking things. But I think when children are young like that, they will do all those kind of things. But they are very dangerous. And, uh, you know, like, uh, OK, that guy Simon a moment ago said, uh, you know, the young fella hanging on the side of the Lewis was a legend. You think that's a very immature attitude it to is, have, is it? It is. It's very bad. I think it's absolutely something. One day something is seriously going to happen to somebody hanging off the Lewis or whatever. They think it's great fun, but it's not fun, really. When something happens to you, you could end up in a wheelchair. OK, but let, let me get, uh, Simon, let me go back to you for one second. It is extremely irresponsible as an adult, which I assume you are, Simon... Yeah. Um, to describe this as, as uh, this young fellow as a legend for doing something as stupid as this. Yeah, well, do you know what? Everything is dangerous, and what's, the incidents are far and few between. Do you know that kind of way? And it's, I mean, it's only boys with these boys, and I don't know as well why there's people texting in, calling them an absolute scumbag and everything. Do you know that kind of way? Why? Because your argument is we've all done stuff like that. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's been done for centuries, ever since automobiles and trains and everything existed. People have been doing what it. What about you know that, that, Louise, that it's been done for centuries? Well, it has. For a few years ago, the children were very innocent years ago. And they kind of just went ahead and did things because they thought that was funny. But it's not funny when you end up... My brother could have ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life for what happened yeah. to him. And that's why I think people... I wouldn't call people scumbags and tell them that this, that and the other. That's not right. Yeah. Thing to do. I but don't you buy that. realise the danger that's involved. That's all, really. It's the danger. That I don't buy that in. argument. I don't buy that argument about innocence, that they were innocent years ago. I think they were just the same. The only difference is now is we know more about stuff because of social media and videos and that. Yeah. Well, I just think, we'll see, I have to say one thing, though, ever since mobile phones came to just into this, into, this, into this generation, I just think there's too much Facebooks, people photographing their meals, doing everything like that. It's all wrong. There's never, but yet, nobody ever has a conversation anymore, and anyone that wants to trill seek will do it on a video just to, to, to send it all over the world or whatever. Okay, but uh, uh, it, it is wasn't. Yeah, this video wasn't shot by one of the young fellas. This was shot by somebody shocked uh, sitting yeah, on the loose. I don't blame them. Yeah, it's an awful thing to see, I suppose, that you, that chap could end up, he could fall off that and end up in a wheelchair. Who's going to look after him if he ends up well, like that? That's another thing they need to think of as well. Who's going to care for them? Well, the one that was videoing it, I mean, if they, I'd say they were just doing it for likes anyway, because why wouldn't they turn around and press the emergency button that run I know, to the front and told the, the man on the tram, yeah. Yeah, well, sorry, if not, somebody had to press the emergency button, that young fellow would have most certainly fallen off yeah, he and he would yeah. most definitely have been killed. So, yeah. that, you know, to be given out about the person videoing for not pressing the emergency... I don't even know. Is there an emergency button on the Lewis? There I is, yeah, there, there is. is. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, the button and it says, um, if he had a bit of sense of mind, he would have gotten to, he would have uh, pressed it and told the man, but I suppose he probably didn't want he would to. Have, he would have knocked the young fellow off it. Yeah, he would have came off it, yeah. Okay, what stay, do about it? stay there There's for one second. Stay there, stay there. Hang on. 6797981 is our telephone number. Tracy Jane, you're on 98FM. How are you? Hiya. Uh, Good. What did you want to say? No, I just think it's it just total stupidity, to be honest with you. Um, it's like that woman said, like it's young kids, uh, troll seeking, you know, but I just, like there's so many videos on that YouTube as well that they hanging off trains and whatever. My own son was only watching them there um, during the week and he's breaking his heart laughing at the stupidity of it. Like, do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, but got... if he was with a group of friends who all um, who all wanted to do it, would he fo- would he follow them? Would who? Would your son follow them if if he was with a group of friends and they all were? Oh, come on, come on, let's do this, let's do this. Oh, no, That's how it happens. Only, he's only seven, like you know what I mean. So um, no, I, d- I doubt if he'd be doing that. But um, as well as that, he has autism, so I think he's got a bit more cop on, to be honest. Um, yeah, no, I just think it's total stupidity, like, do you know what I mean? And if I had been sitting there and I seen that myself, I would have actually made my way up to the bus driver to tell him there's a child, you know what I mean, teenager hanging off the side of the bus. So your young fella had enough sense to look at a video like that and go, oh my jeez, that's so stupid. No, he thought it was hilarious, like, he's only seven. He was like, oh, look at this, mommy, look at this. And I was like, that is so stupid, that is so silly, like, mm. you know. And uh, like he was breaking his heart laughing at it. I says, would you do that? You know, and he's only seven, like seven and a half, like, do you know what I mean? So he's like, no, no, no. He said, I wouldn't do that. That's dangerous. Stay there for a second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Um, Michaela, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Michaela. Hello, Michaela. Oh, you there, Michaela? Sorry, we'll try and get that person back. Uh, Tony, tell me um, uh, your story about your friend. Uh, we were in a... I can't remember the exact day. We were in second class. Work going on on the road. And we were all... We were all like in the mic getting... Hanging off the back of the trucks and all. It was, I think it was a council truck and one of my friend and all fell off and went back over and killed him. Like, you know what I mean? So... Wow. So, so it, was, it was a horrible, horrible situation there. It was just, yeah, it was like, like that as well. Sort of, like, I, I, was, I was hanging out the back of the truck myself, like, you know what I mean? It just naivety and stupidity and being a complete idiot. You know what I mean? But I think this is a, it's worrying when now it's, you have it on, a, it's nearly being glorified on a, a social media, you know what I mean? Like, we can't well, see no, no, it. Uh, like, you know? Okay, on the, on the one hand, I agree with you that uh, people are... Uh, glamour uh, glorifying it on social media. Um, it, it, this wasn't filmed by one of the young fellas. This was filmed by somebody on the loose, shocked by what they were witnessing. Um, the fact of the matter is, uh, like you said, so your friend was killed doing something not even as dangerous yeah. as this. Yeah, well, uh, I, I didn't see that video now with the Lewis, but uh, just says, uh, like, uh, like what it, you were it, saying, scutting off the back of the, the truck while it was, it was doing walk on the road, you know what I mean? Now, like that fella, I, well, I know since now, like that fella that 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 ruined, that ruined that fella, the fella that drove the truck's life. Not only that, uh, the fella that drove the ambulance, uh, my friend, to, in the ambulance, he was never right after as well because he actually knew me friend, like you know what I mean? Really? So, oh, Jesus! It, yeah, yeah. It's it was, it was, it was, it's not. Uh, I just say, like, kids don't be thinking; they don't realize the danger they're in. Like you know what I mean? Like, um. It's, uh, I think it's probably more down to the parents to re- make them realise like what sort of uh, what sort of dangers are out there, like you know. And the the, the problem is uh, that it sadly takes something like what happened to your friend for uh, for the rest of the umphas to go. Geez, won't do that uh, ever again. Yeah. But yeah, and uh, the biggest problem is you can't put an old head on young shoulders. You just no, no, no. Sure, I was, I was, as I said, like I was with myself, I was doing the exact same, and and if unless. Uh, if it didn't happen to him, like, we would have thought I don't know, you know what I mean? It's just affected me now because obviously it was there, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it, it just... Like I said, this video, you know, while we've one young fellow on here saying he's a legend, we would be having a very, very different conversation today if that young fellow had fallen off and got run over by the Lewis. We would be having a completely yeah. different conversation today. Um, that young fellow obviously didn't fall off and obviously didn't get run over by the Lewis. Um, but, like I said, we'd be... Ha- and the uh, parents of that young fellow will be looking for somebody to blame or somebody to sue for him uh, getting on that, uh, that, that tram. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. As I walk in, I walk in there, transport myself there, and it happens all the time, like, you know what I mean? And... Uh, all it takes is uh, a, a, an old bang or a shunt or something to go the wrong way and uh, they're dead. You know what I mean? Like, Literally falling off under the tram. Gone. Yeah, yep, yeah. It is. It's very... I mean, uh, uh, Simon, with that in mind, I don't know how you could say somebody doing something as stupid as that is any sort of a legend. Well, come here. Here's some fire, right? I bet you anything, if anyone was to... Um, if you were... If your parents or your grandparents told you a story of them jumping on a train or a truck or whatever, you would probably laugh at them. You wouldn't turn around and call them.
nobody would. They would they would laugh at they'd laugh at their parents' story, their grandparents' story. Fact. Yeah, that's as may be. Um, <laughs> Yeah, maybe we would. Maybe maybe I'm wrong to be saying that. Uh, maybe we would. Um, so, 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 yeah, do you mind? Why is that? Why is that fella like? Who is this, uh, this fella, Simon? Nearly yeah, 20. So, so, nearly right, 20, 20. Nearly 20. Uh, did, you, did you say he was a legend? Did, like, yeah, it, it's just one thing a child, a, a kid's probably texting saying, oh, he's, a le- he's deadly, he's this and that. Like, they don't know any about that, but like, a man in his 20s, uh, like, Saying that the fellow's a legend for going on like that—that's—that's—that's that's, that's silly, man. Ah, but it's a bit hypocritical to turn around and say, "Oh no, it's stupid," and all when you've done it. We've all done it when we were young. Yeah, but see, you're uh, you're you're only a kid when you do these things. You don't really, like. I mean, when you're tw- in your twenties now, you're being around the block. You should have a. You're, you're not, you're not a kid anymore. You know what I mean? Like, you I should have. A, you should have a bit more sense. I was doing yeah. it till I was sixteen. I know, but uh, you, you've, Richard, you've... What did you know at 16? You know what I mean? You're an adult now, Lee. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but you're still meant to be an adult at 16, but me and my mate still did it. One of the lads was actually 18, and he was still doing it. Well, well if you're 18, you're like, you're at that scoping off things, and all you are, and absolutely easily. You know what I mean? Ah, but come on. I mean, it's only trail yeah, station. Think, I mean, the kid wasn't if horse. I seen, if I seen, if I seen, seen someone in their early teens, fair enough, you say, right, they're just, they're just being, they're just being, they're acting the maggot like. Someone 18 years of age should be out there walking, not hanging off through the trains and whatever yeah, else. Bit of crack. Do you know that kind of way? It's, 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 it's a bit of crack when you're 12, 14 and you don't realise the dangers, but not when you're in, in your 20s and 18. You should be out walking or doing something productive with your life. Stay there, okay, stay there, stay there both of you for a second. Uh, Graham, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Graham? What's the story? Good. What did you want to say on this? Yeah, I totally, I'm, I'm not playing, like, I'm not saying it's totally, it's young and stupid, like, back in the day when I did it, I don't aren't stupid, I didn't have, we just didn't have camera phones. No, so I, people, uh, yeah, so people weren't seeing it, weren't shocked yeah, by it, so you no, know, no, I, I get that. No one knew nothing, so no one knew what we used to do, like, back in, back 15 years ago in town, there was just building sites, 20, so let's go 20 years. It was just building sites. That's what all the kids had mm-hmm. was to get into. There wasn't playgrounds. There wasn't any of this what they have now in all the different flats getting done up, getting pitches, getting play, or getting everything, getting brand new everything. We didn't have that. We had building sites. We had the fruit markets. And wh- what's the point you're trying to make, that you did stupid things as well? We stupid things when we were young. But I just see, I look at some of the comments on some of the people are saying, like, the kid has mental problems and us. Like, come on. Like, are you for real, mate? Like, come on. He's just young and stupid. You do these things and then you suss out. You either like it or you don't and you won't do it again. Okay, like now, it, 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 yes, I agree. We were all, um, yo- we've all been young and stupid, yeah? That's fine. Um, and we've all done stupid things when we were younger. I agree with that as well. And anybody who says that they never did stupid things when they were younger, obviously, was a, liar. Well, liar. Or, or was a real, liar. or was a real goody two shoes when they were younger. Um, the point that I'm trying to make is that um, isn't it up to us as adults to try and persuade young people not to be doing stupid things like this? But you can't persuade someone to do, stop doing stupid things aging, if they're inside the Lewis. What are you going to do, bang on the window and get and then he loses concentration? So what do people do now? It's like the last 10 years, people could be getting stabbed, people will be getting lumped around and they get their camera phone now instead of helping. That's what it is. That's what people do these days. People don't have a clue. So you they okay? You, you you heard uh, Tony saying that his friend was killed while scooting on the back of a truck. You're saying you did it yourself. Uh, I had relatives that died doing it on the dirt. Like I, like I'm not, I'm not saying like I'm not totally. I get it. I'm just saying like we've all done it. So don't be judging the kids on a ten second, freaking video uh, recording. He's just holding on. I like, get it. It's stupid. Like it's totally dangerous. But that's some people. That's a sport. Believe it or not, climbing high buildings, GoPro camera on you. You're looking over. You're up what thousand feet. It's unfortunately this is the day and age now. That's what happens. <sighs> okay, so, so you things. wouldn't be condemning this young fella. You be thinking to yourself, oh, should we all did stupid things like that when we were younger? I wouldn't be condemning him. I wouldn't pick him up and tell him. I'd, I'd tell him he's stupid. I'd say to him, that's very, very, very stupid what you're doing, bud. But I wouldn't slag him about it. I wouldn't say he's as 
some of the like the comments on on your page and say, "Boy, oh, guys, dragged up. He's this. Like, come on. Like, it's not. Like, people just need to think for a few minutes. There's so many uneducated comments and just people just following other people. That's what you're against these days. But that's what it is. Okay, um, Mary, what do you say to uh, to what Graham said? We all did stupid things when we were younger. Don't be condemning this young fella. Um, I totally condemn him. Like, I just think it's ridiculous calling him a hero. I really do. Like, I lost my best friend at 10 years of age. Fell off the back of a truck. I don't know. I think with her man, Tony, I don't know if he's the same friend in common, but like that, there was, he was 10. There was 15, 16 year old lads climbing on the back of the truck, persuade him to get up. He slipped. The truck went over his head and died instantly in front of me. Like, it's something I'll never forget. Like, and it's just, it's silly and it's stupid. Like, if he had a guide, what would you have called him then? Like, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I total I respect, rest in peace, like, to your friend. I've totally nothing against that at all, but, like, you can't... Go on calling him a hero, like, a, whatever. No, no, stupid. I didn't say that. That's what I'm trying well, to do. Whatever I don't you mind. said about him, like, it's just, it's stupid what he did. Like, he's not thinking about... It's, as I said on my Facebook comment, it's not just his life he ruins. He falls off that, yeah, he'll die. But he has to think, he has friends and family and everything else to think of. And plus the people on the Lewis or whoever sees it. Like, yeah, but you don't, you don't be thinking of this stuff when it's happening. When they're doing these kind of things, you're not thinking in your brain, oh, my family, or something bad's going to happen. The most sensible people would be thinking about it. Like, most well, people, the most sensible sense people not wouldn't do it. it. Exactly. The most sensible people wouldn't do it then. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to condemn you or, your, or anyone that don't, a lot of slagging them. They don't slag them. But then why, are you, like, why are you on calling them, like, you know, uh, it's great or whatever you're saying about them? It's I did. See, there you go. You have to listen. I wasn't saying he's great. What I said he's young, and, it's young and stupid. But yeah, you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to do these things to understand you know, I've never that done it is it. I'm stupid. I'm 30 years of age and I've never done it because I've been reared up right to know. But, uh, uh, but Mary, OK, you may not have done what that young fella did on the loose, but I can be honest and say when I was a young fella, we used to hang on the back of, uh, of coal trucks, of, yeah, uh, bin, <laughs> of, of uh, bin trucks, of yeah, bread market. vans. No. We well, used to do all of that. We used to have no. roller blades on I, I, and I, hold I on the back of the trucks. We were brought up to say, like my father works for the council and we've been brought up to say the big trucks obviously they're dangerous and stuff and we've been told that it's not it's your be, I, 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 was I was told the exact same thing and if my dad had, had, had oh. ever found out we were doing it he'd have killed us yeah. it didn't it stop didn't, us doing it though but it stopped me you know when I was seeing what I seen as I said in my Facebook messages I still it's like yesterday I can still see it in my head and I have a 10 year old son now and I've told him what's happened because there were people doing it not so long ago in the estate where we live and he was like oh it's cool and I was like well it's not and that's what you need to do. You need to tell him. And I told him the ins and outs of what happened to my friend. He won't, my son, I trust him 100% not to be on the back of that truck. Yeah, but see, see, you tell happen. the kids. It's like, it's like your parents telling you not to do this, not do that. Like, if, you're, if they're going to go around telling you not to do this and do that, let's go. You're not going to do it. Well, my son, I have a 10 year old son, and I, I know for a fact. You're not around, I'm not being it. smart, but I'm not trying to say, like, he could do other things. Like, do you understand? Like, it's. Because you tell him not to do it, that doesn't mean he's not going to do it. Sometimes yeah, but he might do little silly me not to do things and stuff. He's not going to put his life in danger. He's been told. It kills people. He's been yeah, told. Yeah, he's like. been told. Like, you, you fucking, you, everything kills you these days. I'm not being smart. Like, I read in the paper there, if you eat fucking sausages. Mind the language there, Graham, oh, if you don't mind. Good man, thank you. Sausages and rashes, you get cancer. Oh, like, yeah. Everything, everything kills you. Like, like if, you, if you go around like them, let your kid out and say to him, don't get dirty. Okay, stay, stay there for one second. Let me bring in one last call on this. Uh, Kathy, you're on Dublin's 98 FM. Hi, Kathy. Hello. Kathy, your five year old cousin was killed. Yeah, I was only a baby when it happened. He was only five. Um, and like that, he was sitting on the back of a, l- a, tr- a, a lorry, a coal lorry. And uh, he fell off. Um, and the details I heard, like, because I asked about it, but um, that it went over his head. Um, like well, my dad. Very, it sounds very similar to that last story we heard. Yeah, yeah, and he was only five. Now my dad, he never got over it. Like you know, he he because he was there when it happened, and he just and he went to the hospital and stuff. And he said it's something that you'd never, you never get over. Like and kids do it, and it's, it's like it's it's not the cleverest of things to do. Like you know, you teach your kids not to do stupid mm. things, and that's a stupid thing. <laughs> You're risking your life. You know, your man looked like he was just wanted to show off. And, 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 nice. and yes, uh, and we all were sh- little show-offs when we were kids, let's be honest. Uh, or A lot of us were. And it's just so difficult to put an old head on young shoulders and tell them that, you know, this isn't a cool thing to do because you could be dead. Yeah, you just you just have to hope and pray and just put good a good head on their shoulders and say, look, 
it's a, it's a stupid thing to do. Don't do it. <laughs> like, what can you? I know you can't put your own head and your mm. shoulders, but. All right, Cathy, thanks very much indeed. Let's just send that message out there, uh, lads. All it takes, if you're doing something like that, like hanging on the side of a of a moving Lewis, all it takes is for something to run out in front of the Lewis and he jams on his brakes, you are gone. You're dead. So please think about it. If you happen to be listening, don't be scutting on the side of the Lewis. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. I want to do a a Dublin Talks text poll about something completely different now. Sexism has been a subject that's been in the news an awful lot lately with gender pay gaps and uh, stuff like that. But what many people seem to forget is sexism can be a two-way street. One clear example is that of a nightclub just outside Dublin that has decided to run a ladies' free night this coming weekend. They posted the announcement on their Facebook page yesterday, advertising that this coming Saturday night is Ladies' Night, where all women will be given free entry into their nightclub before 1am. If you're a man, you pay in. Now, the fact is, if this were the other way around, and they were doing men's free nights, feminists will be screaming for the place to be boycotted. So here's the question. I want to run a uh, Dublin Talks text poll, and then I want to take your calls on this on 67979081. Is it sexist of a venue to have a ladies' free night? You see, but the club knows that if they let ladies in free, the men will just follow. That's just the way it is. So what I want you to do is answer that question for me right now and send me a text to 0877989898. The question is simple. Is it sexist for a nightclub venue to have a ladies' free night? So ladies' free entry into their nightclub before 1 a.m. Is that sexist? Text the word yes or the word no to 0877 98 98 98. Simply text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. And I'll take calls on that in just a moment. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Get on it now. Call 6797981. Good morning, Dublin. How are you? My name is Adrian Kennedy, and this radio program is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. We're here until uh, uh, midday today. Now, uh, I want to run a Dublin Talks uh, text poll, and I want to ask you a uh, simple question. Is it sexist of a venue to have a ladies' night. Is it sexist of a venue to have a ladies' night? The reason we ask is this was brought to our attention. A particular venue here, uh, well, just north of uh, Dublin, has advertised that it is having a ladies' night this coming Saturday. And at the ladies' night on Saturday, ladies will be admitted free of charge up until 1 a.m. Then after that, they will be charged... But up until 1am, men will be charged to get in, okay? So they, the poster says ladies' night, and we're asking, is it sexist? What I want you to do is text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. Text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. Okay, so all I want you to do is send me a text right now. Text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. And my question is, once again, is it sexist for a venue, a a nightclub venue, to have a ladies' night this coming Saturday? Uh, They're advertising it as a ladies' night. uh, Free admission to women uh, before 1 a.m. Lads, I'm sorry, you have to pay, but the ladies get in free. Now, here's the thing. I actually get it. I understand from the club's point of view why they're doing it. Because, whether you like it or not, lads, once there's ladies going to the nightclub, the lads are going to follow, even if they have to pay in. That's just the reality of it. So a club knows that if it gets a load of ladies in, the men are going to follow. Now, call that sexist, call it what you like, but to me, that's business. 
Now, there was a time where most venues had a ladies' night where ladies were admitted free of charge up till one or two or whatever. Uh, it's become less common, but this one was sent in to us today to highlight uh, that this is still going on. It's a, it's a nightclub venue um, just north of Dublin, and uh, that's what they're doing. Is it sexist? Text yes or no to 0877 98 98 98. Um, I'd love to hear from you, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin, you're on 98FM. How are you, Kevin? Good morning. How Good, are you? Mo- Good morning, Kevin. How are you? Not too bad. Now, Not Kevin, bad. Uh, you believe that this is pure discrimination. Yeah, well, of course it is. Right. Now, if, as you said earlier on in your uh, build-up to this, if it was the other way around, ah, the hell the pay. I agree, well, yes. If we were talking about a nightclub advertising a uh, men's night where men have free admission up to 1am and ladies have to pay, I agree we would be having hell to pay. However, yeah, no. however... Am, how, this has uh, been going on a long time, though. Yeah, well, it, it's not as common... Yeah, it's been going for decades. Yeah, but it's not as common lately as it used to be. But yes, obviously, this, this particular uh, advert that was sent in to us today proves that it is still going on. But I agree. Look, I, look, I'm not. Dis- I'm kind of agreeing and disagreeing with you. Um, it's been going for a long time, but a bean counter in an, an accountancy office has said, "Thought, right, this is the way we're going to make money." That's what it comes down to. And isn't that what business is? That's exactly. I know. And so I'm, I'm kind of. I don't. I don't agree. So with you're nearly it. arguing I against don't agree yourself with here. It, but I agree with. Okay, but let, I, let, I let me give, where let me give you an example. As somebody who DJed for many, many years, yep. Yourself. Uh, and and in fact, I've spoken to other DJs about this as well. Uh, what a DJ will do in a pub or a club if they're if you're trying to get people up dancing, yep, yep. is you will play music that gets the women up dancing, and once yep. you get the women up dancing, <laughs> the men yep. follow, and that's just exactly. a fact. Now. Call that sexist if you want, uh, but I can tell you, as somebody who DJ for many years, um, that's exactly what I did. I started with songs that got women up dancing, and once the women got up, the men followed. Exactly. Now, so I'm, isn't I'm, this? I'm, I'm kind of seeing both sides of the coin. If you, if you understand, look, if it, as I said, if it was your side of the coin, hell to pay. But I understand where the company's coming from. They're there to make profits, and whatever means they need to take. They're going to follow it, you know. Um, but it, I, if you have the same conversation the opposite way around tomorrow, and, I mean, but here's the thing. Yeah, but here's the thing. But, uh, but here's the thing. We would not be having the conversation the other way around because no, that's all. Never women, Never. women won't flock to a nightclub no. because they think it's full of men. But men will flock to a nightclub if they think it's full of women. Exactly. Uh, so it's it's kind of you know um, it's what what do you. So you've now what, nearly talk, you you've now nearly argued yourself out of this. I know I kind of have, but I like I look. I can see both sides of the coin, but it's, it isn't fair. We just let the women pay. Do you want equal opportunities? They want equal pay. Well, I agree with all that, but right? the men, but the uh, men get stuffed every time. You know that we we all know that, right? It's like, come on. Okay, stay there for one second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Text zero uh, eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight if you uh, want to communicate with us by text or WhatsApp. Text yes or no to zero eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight for our poll. Where I'm asking, is it sexist of a nightclub venue to have a ladies' night where ladies get free admission up to one a.m.? Somebody who contacted us earlier on and sent us a copy of the poster believes yes, it is sexist. It is downright sexist. Do you think that? Text yes or no to 0877 98, 98, 98 and I'll give you the results of that poll uh, in a couple of minutes. You might be surprised by it. Um, Pat, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Pat? Not too bad, not too bad at all, Aiden. Pat, as a man, do you think that an advert like this, a ladies' night, free admission for ladies before 1am, do you think it's sexist? No, it's not. We're living in a society where we are too politically correct now. We can't even break wind in public and we'll offend someone. <laughs> that's true. You know? <laughs> so that's the way it is. Listen, listen, the women get in free. If a man is bringing out a woman, he's the winner because you're not paying for her to get in. Right, well. even that's so, sexist. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's even that sexist. So I can't say anything and I'll offend someone. 
But OK, okay Pat, Pat uh, we, we were saying if it were the other way around and there was posters up saying uh, it's men's night, free admission for men up to 1am, women have to pay, there would be murder. Absolutely, yeah. I totally agree with you. There would be murder. We can't do anything now and we'll offend someone. Mind you, having said all that, that's never going to happen. Because no, the, reason, won't. Won't. the no. reason companies let women in for free uh, is that they know the men will follow. And it's as simple as that, lads. That's the that's how, yeah. how much gobshites we are, uh, that they know that if there's loads of women going to their nightclub, men are going to flock to the place. And that's just the fact of it. Um, Melanie, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Melanie? Hi, Jeremy. How's it going? Good, thank you. What did you want to say? Well, I think that it should be free for all women. I would never pay into a nightclub myself. And I don't think women should have to pay in. Anyway. Why? Why? I think by... It's, it, we're nearly doing better advertising for any nightclub than any poster can do or any Facebook post or advertisement. Like, you know, if a place has loads of women, it's going to have a good reputation for the lads and therefore it's going to get a lot more business. So I don't think that women should So what, what are you saying? If you were running a nightclub, you would just let women in for free full stop? Well, I personally never pay. I, don't, I can't remember the last time I've ever paid into a nightclub. I never pay in. Right. I, I, you know, Why, I, do you I, know I, loads of people in loads of nightclubs? No, but you know you you know how to talk to the security or whatever, whoever they are standing on the door. And I just think that if they let all women in free, then the men would come so they'd actually make more money. And I, I don't know. Like, no, I, I, do, I, I do get that that is the rationale behind it. I understand it. And I've already said yeah, that, uh, that as a DJ... A lady, it's it's a nice thing to say. I'll go on ahead, like you know, go ahead there, darling. Like you're you're. It's a, it's more. It's nearly like a gentleman or a, sh- a chivalry type thing, if that makes sense. <sighs> okay, look. If I, you go to a bar with a guy and yeah. you're going for drinks, he's going to buy you your drink. Man, not it's all only, your drinks. Surely only, you're going to well, buy some only, yourself. Well, if you go out on a date, obviously the guy is going to pay for everything, you know. And it should be kind of similar here. Like, I think that they should let ladies in for free. And not only for the ladies, I think it's nice for the ladies, but also for the likes of, um, from a selling point of view, I would imagine that that would bring in loads of business. All right, stay there for one second, Melanie. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. Women should get in free everywhere is what she is saying. Uh, what would you say to that, Pat? Women should get in free everywhere. No, I, I, listen, if I open my mouth now, I'm going to offend someone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want, this is a no-win situation. Well, no, I, well I let me ask, Kev- let me ask Ke- Kevin that question. Kevin, women should get uh, in free everywhere. Uh, no, that, I, I, it's that girl having a laugh. Really? really. Well, she so said- to, no, hang on, hang on, bear with me. All right, this lady is basically subjecting herself to being a pawn. Okay. No, I'm not a pawn. She want, no, yeah, well, you, you're going to do what you want to do. You want to, yeah, you want to get you other like men. You're, your going to, you're, you're asking a male to do to move you. You go. So basically, you get in free, you get free drinks, and that male is going to no, decide. I don't think decide. It's going to decide for you I think that what there you should drink, be special, what sorry, you don't I drink. I think that there should be special offers on drinks. No, 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 no. You said free. Also. No, also, no, you said free. Everywhere. No, you did say that because, you, no, you, you did no, say I, that everywhere. I, I 100% think that women should get into nightclubs free. But if they're not going to give free drinks. So any, any, any place that has a cover charge entering the front door, yeah. uh, women should get in for nothing. No yeah, wonder like, you don't get paid the same as a male. Oh, my if God. If, that, if that's the way you're changing... If that's Wrong. the way you're thinking, if that's your attitude. No, but whatever happens... If that, that's your clean. attitude, I should be entitled oh, to going free. I bet free. you take a girl out on a date and ask her to go Dutch. I no, no, it's, it's called for Dutch. No, no, we're not in 1950s. It's called, we go Dutch. I don't care and, and if we're in the 1950s. Date, we go not. Dutch. I don't care okay? if we're in the 1950s. I would expect to be let in free. You expect, so you're entitled well, I would expect silver spoon. women. To uh, a silver spoon, I'm telling you. Yeah. But, but your, your, your argument here is, there. Melanie, your argument here is that it makes good business sense. Is that what you're, you're arguing? It doesn't make good business, business sense. Otherwise, no women would go there. It's the oh place to be bankrupt. Calm down. You sound like you're about to hit puberty there. Yeah, no. Believe me, sweetheart, I'm far beyond puberty. The place will be bankrupt if you let every woman in. Well, hang on, uh, Kevin. Uh, I have to say, I think you're slightly wrong there because, yeah, uh, okay, this this particular. Okay, ve- if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll take it. Okay, well, 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 then why do you think that this venue has a ladies' night where it is free admission for ladies before one a.m.? Why do you think they're doing that? Because it's all down to the the bottom, but the the bottom. It's the all down to what? 
the, the, the bottom line. The, they want the to get women in because they know men will follow. Exactly, yeah. It's down so, to the profit. So, well, hang okay, on, but I, I, I did disagree but then, with you on that. But then, fo- fo- with you. following Melanie's argument makes logical sense then. Well, if you have women free all the time, it's only going to be full of women and there'll be no Adrian. profit. No bottom line. Adrian, if I were looking for a date, I guarantee if he heard a bar was doing like free drink for all women, I, I guarantee he'd be up there like a rat of a drain pipe. No, I wouldn't actually yes, believe it. You you're an no. absolute liar. You're actually <laughs> disgusting. You're a liar. <laughs> okay, you're look, fully, you're so full. I'd be happy incredible. to give my mobile number, and you can text me I and would not follow want me on Facebook, number. whatever you, you want. Like, you sound like the type of guy that would take a girl out and wait for her to take out and pay, and not hold doors for a while. I bet you don't it's even cold. hold doors for, Hang for women. On. Are you talking about a first date? I'm talking first about date. any date or interaction with a woman, which I'm assuming you've never had. Okay, we're, well, we're not actually talking about paying for a first date. It's I'm a conversation, Adrian, it's I'm a actually married it's a conversation, conversation we'll have. A, it's a conversation that we'll... Women, um, sorry, Adrian, women shouldn't have to pay, and that's just... Okay, the, uh, uh, Melanie, okay, uh, <laughs> we've been debating an awful lot about the gender pay gap, and I'm sure as a woman you believe you should get paid the same as a man, do you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, fine. Well, let me read this message that's just come in to me, and it says, she has just set women's rights... um, uh, 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 Sorry, she just set back women's rights. Uh, Go ahead there, darling. They sell themselves uh, for free stuff. I wouldn't go to a bar that had free entry for uh, women. You would end up spending all your wages on her for the night. No, thanks. Okay, I bet you she wears lesbian shoes and has a boy's haircut. Well, even if she was a lesbian, she'd get in free. And her partner get in no, free because they're both women. Sick, like, so, what, what's Nancy's your point? Oh, uh, Hence, reason the face we fem- broke. Excuse me for a second. All the feminists. Her, she walk away. Oh, we're, we're all for ourselves. I do believe that women shouldn't have to pay in because I believe from a business point of view, it's marketing genius. And from a customer point of view, I don't think we should have to pay. Why should we have to pay when men earn more than women as it is? Why should we pay the same for the same thing? Hang on, there's only saying someone's on the social guy, welfare, isn't there? Doing the same job and earning more money. Oh, you, yeah, I tell you what. No, I do think, and in Las Vegas... I know you I think, but well, you're not thinking very not, cleverly. Sorry, I'm trying to make a point here, if that's okay. Walk away. In Las Vegas, all the nightclubs, as far, I, I haven't been, but my friend is just back, and she said that all the nightclubs she went to were free for women. I think it's absolutely spectacular. Like, I don't know why it's not a thing here. Okay, do me a favour, stay on the line there for one second. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one. Is our telephone number you can text or WhatsApp us on 0877 98 98 98. Ladies free nights or ladies nights where you're free up until 1am in pubs and clubs, places that charge on the front door. Is that sexist or are they right? We're back in a second. 98 FM's Dublin Talks with Mattress Express at Des Kelly Interiors, Longmile Road. Because sleep shouldn't have to wait. Good morning, Dublin. It is uh, Wednesday morning. I'm Adrian Kennedy, and this is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. Huge reaction to what we're talking about, and that is uh, nightclubs or venues having uh, ladies free nights or ladies free before 1 a.m. nights. Because um, we're talking about a particular advertisement for a venue for this Saturday night. Uh, they uh, have a poster called Ladies Night, where all women will be given free entry into their nightclub before 1 a.m. If you're a man, you pay in. Sorry about that, lads. But we're asking whether or not this is sexism, or does this make perfect business sense from a nightclub's point of view? Because, call it sexist, call it what you want, if women go, men will follow. Whether we like to admit that or not. And like I said, as a DJ, uh, over many years, I always start the night with music that will get women up dancing, because the men will follow. And that's just the fact of it. That's just the way it is. Um, where am I going now? Liz, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Liz? Hiya. Now, Liz, what did you want to say on this? Uh, I just wanted to know if that, when I sent in the message, the girl, Melanie, that was talking, is that the same Melanie who's usually on calling all men predators? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah she wants women allowed in the club for free to attract all men. Well, no, that, what she said was, it, ma- it makes, she said it makes perfect business sense for uh, pubs and clubs that charge in to let women in for free. I know, but she also said that if she's out with men, she expects them to pay for everything. These are the same predators she's talking about, isn't it? Well, uh, yeah. That was all I wanted to know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Claire, you're on 98FM. How are you, Claire? Hi, how's things? Good, thank you, Claire. That was, what did you want to say? 
basically, like, I, I'd agree that it's just basic marketing. I mean, it is. it might be positive discrimination, but at the end of the day, there's plenty of things that are geared towards men. I mean, if there's marketing out there that you might have poker nights or, you know, there's loads of places that run things to get men in the door. Um, men's clubs, you know, after football, sports bars, all this kind of thing. I things. don't know any so, place that is specifically men orientated. Name one. Well, I don't know. I can't name one off the top of my head, but this isn't specifically female orientated. This is aimed to get both sexes in the door. But they're just giving the women free because they know the men will follow. Yes, but, and, and, well, and I don't know why people get upset about that because that is a fact. <laughs> yeah, it's just marketing. It's the reality. We can, like... The, like, like, I just want to go back to what like, uh, Melanie was saying. She was talking about, you know, the, the pay gap and all the rest. Yes. But I don't agree with a lot of what she says. I think she's just trying to be inflammatory. But, um, like, I was talking there about the pink tax. I mean, women do have to pay more for the same stuff. Like, you know, if you go into a market, if anything is geared towards women, it's more expensive. That's just the way it is. So, you know, I, I think people are quick to jump on the bandwagon and call sexism when it's all women are getting it free. But nobody get really cares. Well, here, about. okay, I was running a, a poll where I was asking people, do they um, believe that a, a ladies' night where women get in free before 1 a.m. and men have to pay, do they believe that that is sexist? Here's the result of that poll. You might be surprised by this. Okay. F- 52%, now it's nearly 50 50, 52% said yes, they believe that it is sexist. That doesn't surprise me, though, because I think men particularly are quick to notice when women are getting anything that they aren't, but they're not quick to notice when women are actually negatively affected. But, uh, but, so like you see, but I'm wondering what sort of examples you can give me of, of things that men get into... Hey, I mean, well, you're talking no, about poker nights, but I, I, I know of poker nights... Yeah. yeah, but I know of poker nights that women play in as well. I'm not saying women don't, but I'm talking about when marketing is advertised towards men. So if there's a big football match on and they're doing, you know, drink specials and stuff... They tend to have more of a masculine, you know, marketing feel to it. Like if oh, like p- they're, they're pints, are, pints for four euro or pints yeah, for three no, euro. Yeah, women don't drink pints, but marketing is geared usually towards one of the sexes. Um, I know, but uh, but never never quite as blatantly. I mean, no, e- e- even down to there's a uh, a car insurance company called Just for Women. Just for Women, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, if I were to set up a company tomorrow and call it Just for Men, that would be murder. I don't. I don't think there would. I think again. I think it's just marketing, and anybody that have a problem with that needs to get a grip. Because, like, yeah, this is one thing that women are getting for free. But there is, like, men. If you go into a shopping market and you compare, and the research has been done on this, if you compare men's products to women's products, the exact same product, products which are marketed are sometimes you know 150 percent the price for women. So women are paying through the nose, and, and again, it's marketing because women are more likely to go for the feminine-looking products than they are to buy the exact same thing. Okay, I want to read... Uh, uh, let me get your reaction to this then, Claire. And I'd love to know women's reaction to this. This has just been sent in to me this second, okay? Yeah. And it's from a venue... I'm not going to name it because I can't verify it. Uh, yeah. It's for a venue in Temple Bar, okay? Yeah. And it says, Every Thursday, lads night out. And it say, right. and then it says, It's not for girls... Man-sized drinks and food specials, pitchers of beer, large wings and pitcher combo, weekly uh, Xbox and PS4 competitions on our huge video wall. Is that not sexist? No, because I can walk in the door there. If there are blocking women at the door... But it actually, says, it actually says on this poster, it's not for girls. Yeah, but that's marketing. And I need, like, they're marketing it towards men because they want to get one night of the week where men go out. You know, like... I just think anybody that has a problem with something that's not actually directly affecting them, like, it's marketing. If they were blocking women at the door, that would be a different issue. Sorry, I don't love you head Okay, but, but yeah, yeah no, I, d- I doubt this place is actually going to physically stop women going in. Um, but, uh, sorry, uh, Melanie, we're trying to get back in there. Go on. Yeah, the, the, the poster you just read about the yes. bar in Temple Bar, what did it say? It says, lads night out every Thursday. Uh, uh, the, the side of the poster says, it's not for girls. Uh, oh my god m- man sized drinks and food specials <gasps> blah 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 oh my god that place should be shut down that is crazy oh my god why is it crazy I am we- screaming well, hang on this conversation I'm sta- actually hang on. screaming here this conversation started from a conversation about ladies night so oh, here's a no, venue no, hang on so Adrian, here's, here's a venue crazy. in Temple no. Bar that is running <laughs> a lads night out no that they should be shut down I'm crying they should actually be shut down. You're such a hypocrite. No, I'm not. Like, oh, lads. you absolutely are. <laughs> lads only. No ladies. 
It doesn't say. It, it, oh it's, my god! It's I like know. a Yorkie bar said. It's not for girls. This uh, is saying the same thing. A total cockfest. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! No, they should be shut down. That's completely. That is discrimination. That's, that is it, that is hypocrisy from you. No, that's disgusting. And I tell so you, you what, man, I wouldn't be, my partner wouldn't be going to that. Because Melody, I wouldn't you be just said that a moment ago that women should get in free everywhere and men well, shouldn't. I'm actually crying. I would my, my my partner would not be allowed to go to something like that. I wouldn't let him. <laughs> All right, let me bring him one last call on this. Colin, you're on uh, ninety eight FM. Hello, how's it how going? How are you, Colin? What, what did you want to say? Not too bad. How are you, Melanie? Are you crying there, yeah? I'm actually screaming. I can't believe it. I uh, know. I totally get what they're coming from there. The yeah, the like, that's disgraceful. When uh, you came out with that bleeding uh, statement about saying that uh, you think it's a gentleman and a chivalrous thing for a guy to do and let you in for free. Pay in. Will you uh, ever pull your head out of your hole? He's letting you in for free because he's chasing his hole off you. Get a grip. And you sound like I don't care why I'm getting in for free. All I know is I'm getting in for free. So when you're paying your smelly 20 quid, I'm drinking tequila for nothing. Well, <laughs> can, can I just confirm, by the way, that this venue in Temple Bar that has the lads' night out, I'm just after confirming that it's on their Facebook page, uh, and it is Buskers on the Ball oh, in uh, Temple I will be, Bar. I'll be up there. Don't you worry really? about that. I will <laughs> actually be up there, and that will not happen. Oh, my God. No, ladies, the cheek of them. They need to be shut down, like, uh, right so, now. I'm well, uh, uh, there you go. I'm, I'm quite happy because it's one of my favourite venues in Temple Bar. Bus- no, Buskers yeah, you on would the ball. Like it. Yeah, yeah, Buskers on the man, ball in Temple Bar. The quality? They Where's have the quality? a hang on. They have a lads' no. night out every Sorry, Thursday. Adrian, I don't care. Where's the equality, Melanie? Where's the equality in a, in a, a different venue uh, in yeah. North Dublin or uh, just it's north of Dublin standard. having a women's night, a ladies' it's night? Double standard. It's not the exact same thing. It's a ridiculous it. conversation. Anyway, there you are, lads. If you want a lads' night out, uh, buskers and temp- uh, buskers on the ball in Temple Bar. Where did you go? <laughs> oh. This is ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks. We're back with you again uh, tomorrow morning at ten a.m. Have a great Wednesday, and Barry Dunn is on the way uh, live from Dundrum Town Centre in just a moment with some brilliant music in the next hour like these. Dublin Talks with Mattress Express at Des Kelly Interiors, Long Mile Road. Because sleep shouldn't have to wait. 98.